Aerojet, the most experienced travel agency company in Grenada, serving our clients and businesses for over 40 years. IATA accredited, we issue tickets on 280 airlines, representatives for Condor, the German Airlines, and main agents for Virgin, KLM and Air France, who are specialists to the Middle East. Walk in to our ticket office at Morris Bishop Highway, call 439 4444, WhatsApp 534 7755, or visit caribjet.com. Continues at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium this weekend in the 12th annual Wangiji Super Knockout Football Tournament. It's week three, and on Saturday, 29th, from 7 p.m., game one, East Side 11 Devils comes up against Blast St. David's Football Club. Then at 9 p.m., Queens Park Rangers versus Spice Mobile Adler Sports Club. Then on Sunday, another two matches Carlos Electrical Happy Hill U19 takes on Montreal Sports Club at 6 p.m., and then game two at 8 p.m., Antillian Group. GBSS versus Hard Rock Sports Club. Admission to both games, $20. The 12th annual Waggy T Super Knockout Football Tournament is on. Don't miss a game. The Grenadian General Insurance Half Marathon and 10K Road Race is on. On Sunday, November 13th, this race starts at 2 p.m., beginning at Current Junction St. David and going to the Karani James Athletic Stadium. There are prizes for the top 10 male and female finishers in the Half Marathon, top 5 finishers in the 10K, prizes for the oldest finisher, youngest finisher, and the school, club, or organization with the most finishers. Transportation will be provided. Register at GrenadaXS.com. Registration closes Saturday, 12th November. The Grenadian General Insurance Half Marathon and 10K Road Race is on! Have you noticed an increase or decrease in your electricity bill? You know that changes in the fuel and non-fuel rates affect your bill. You should also be aware that changes in household activities affect your bill. Ask yourself these questions. Have the rates changed? Have there been more people at your home? Have your children been on holiday? Have you used your fan or air conditioning unit more often to beat the heat? Are any of your electrical appliances or equipment faulty? Have you added any new appliances such as transformers, water heaters or pumps? Make it a habit to understand any changes on your electricity bill. For more factors that affect your bill, visit www.grenlec.com. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Did you know a lower electricity bill is something we can all achieve with consistent energy management? Pay attention to changes in your monthly bill. Has the fuel charge increased or decreased? Have you used more or less electricity? Monitor changes in your household activities. Visitors or more activities during the holidays can increase your electricity bill. Service appliances regularly. Appliances can cause you to use more electricity if they are not working properly. Switch off or unplug appliances and equipment from the outlet. Build good energy habits as a family. Review your bill or billing information on the Grenlec mobile app each month. Small changes can make a big difference. Save energy and spare your pocket. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Hello and welcome to the MTV Evening News for Thursday, 27th October, 2022. Coming up tonight, former Supervisor of Elections wins court matter against the Governor-General. 
A call is made for the relevant authorities to intervene and address several challenges in a primary school on the western side of the island. Grenville flooding wars continue. And in sports, Jamaica Talawas open to franchise expansion. We have the details of these and more after the break. Do you know you can lower your electricity bill by changing the way you do laundry? Front loader washing machines are designed to reduce electricity and water consumption. When upgrading, buy with this in mind. You can also lower your electricity bill by doing full loads of laundry, using the sunlight to dry your clothes, and ironing in bulk. As an individual consumer, I cannot impact global fuel prices. However, I can ease the burden of rising fuel rates by changing the way I do laundry. What can you do? Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. The first segment of MTV News is brought to you in association with GUT Cooperative Credit Union. It's where you belong. Do more with your new GUT Credit Union Visa Debit Card, which gives you access to your cash at any Connex or Visa certified ATMs locally and internationally. Make your payments with a tap of your card using the contactless feature and have the freedom to make purchases locally, online or overseas whenever you travel anywhere Visa is accepted. Experience the enhanced security fraud protection through the Visa chip technology. If you don't have your new GUT Credit Union Visa International Debit Card, speak to any one of our representatives today to do more. Your new GUT Credit Union Visa International Debit Card. A smarter way to access your cash. More smart, more secure. Good evening. With the news in detail, I am Troy Gill. Former Supervisor of Elections Judy Benwa has won her court matter against Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Cecile La Grenade. The matter against Her Excellency Governor General Dame Cecilia Grenade was brought by Benoit, challenging the decision, alleging that she was unlawfully removed as a supervisor of elections. High Court Judge Justice Ralston Glasgow also ordered the Governor General to pay a certain amount of money to Ms. Benoit for the manner in which she was sacked from the post. Tonya St. Louis Lawrence has more. The defendant's case supported the head of state's decision, saying that the Governor General acted responsibly and rationally in the exercise of the power to determine that Benoit should cease to perform the functions of Supervisor of Elections. Appearing before High Court Judge the Honorable Justice Royston Glasgow was attorney at law Ruggles Ferguson on behalf of the claimant and Solicitor General for the defendant, Sir Karen Reed. Speaking on the judgment handed down, this public relations officer of the Public Workers Union, Daisy Hassan. And we greeted that news, um, you know, we greeted that news with some optimism. One, because it really validates and vindicates the character, substance of Ms. Benoit, um, who is a former public servant and also former member of the PWU. And um, so we were very, very happy and encouraged to see that Ms. Benoit was able to win a suit, which she filed against the Governor General, a very the highest office in our land. And um, based on the, the, the precedent set in law and based on the laws of Grenada, as it relates to labor and to employment, Ms. Benmore was able to secure a judgment. Hazard highlights some terms used in the judgment that draws the attention of the union. And basically what this judgment is reaffirming is that no matter how uh, high you may be, you are not in violation and you are not higher than the laws of our land. And the laws of our land, as, in, as regards to labor and employment, being the, the, the uh, Constitution of Grenada, and more specifically, the Labor Code uh, 1999, into uh, subsequent years. And there are words that jumped out, um, out of that judgment. Words like grounded principles of fair play, fairness, natural justice, procedure, making reference to sections 87 to sections uh, 84 and so of, of, of the Employment Act, which speaks about persons who are, who there are allegations about, uh, where there, there's some allegation as to your conduct in your job, that you have the right under law to a hearing. 
The outcome of the matter, which was filed in 2013, according to Hazard, is a lesson for all. The lesson for all of us, um, because we want to see a situation where workers and government have to be continually at loggerheads or filing cases at each other, as the case may be. But what we've seen in all of these cases is that where the employer and where the government or the state as an, as an employer acts rashly and hastily and does not follow the letter of the law or the procedure that the law lays out, eventually the taxpayers pay because the law must win. The law will always, always win because it, it, it does not recognize an office or mm-hmm. a person or your rank. What it recognizes is the letter of the law. And so this matter was filed way back in, t- in 2013, I think. And we are in 2022, but one way or the other, what we are seeing, the precedent set in all of these cases, is that where the employer, where the state does not act properly, eventually taxpayers have to pay because the state loses and workers eventually win. And so it is, it's a lesson for all of us today right now um, to, to, to learn from. If, as you know, there is a saying, who have ears to hear, let them hear, and who have eyes to see, let them see, and I think we are all seeing with this judgment here today. In conclusion, it was ordered by Judge Glasgow that the one application for judicial review filed by Benoit against the defendant was granted, and two, the decision by the Governor General to terminate Benoit's appointment as Supervisor of Elections with effects from October 1st to 2013 was in breach of natural justice and principles of fairness and was unlawful, null, and void. Three, the claim against the second defendant, the Attorney General, in respect of the actions of the Cabinet is dismissed with no order of cost. And four, Ben were granted the cost in the sum of $5,000 in respect of a claim against the first defendant. For the MTV Evening News, I am Tonya St. Louis. One primary school in the parish of St. John's continued to experience its fair share of challenges, including leaks during heavy rainfall and individuals entering the school uninvited and using its facilities. Teachers and parents of the Florida Government School continue to experience challenges that hinders its day-to-day operations and is calling for the matter to be urgently addressed. Vice Principal of the school, Deborah DeCoto, highlighted some of these challenges at the school on Thursday, which also include a tree that continues to grow in the middle of the kitchen area. We have the issue with the kitchen, with the tree that is within the building of the kitchen, um, where when it's raining, right now we are in the rainy season, lots of water cups in there, and the flooring, which is made of ply, it is deteriorating. Even by the fridge, where the fridge is not functioning properly, the water from the fridge has rotten the ply right by the, the fridge there. The classrooms are also affected during heavy rainfall, Dakota said. We also have issues with the doors. Whenever we got heavy, get heavy downpours, lots of water enters into the classroom. The one right at the um, lunchroom, which is used as a classroom, the kitchen, the principal's office, and the other classrooms on the platform here, lots of water comes in there on the floor. We like that to be addressed. Vice President of the Parent Teacher Association and a parent at the school, Annette Welsh Mackenzie, expressed concerns of individuals passing through the school uninvited and using its facilities. Well, um, how would you feel as a person knowing that your daughter or your son goes to the toilet and get raped? Because persons are using the toilet as a home, as a bathroom. So a lot of concerns. I am asking for help from the authorities, from whoever see it fit to help us because it is frightening, not for just the kids, but as parents, you at work, you at home, and you wondering what is going on here. She also raised the concern of a road that was constructed through the neighboring playing field. Coming in a few weeks is the school fair, and someone saw it fit to erect this road, which to my understanding did not go to the relevant authorities to get that road in. You understand? So, and look at the condition of that road now. So where is the children to play? Look at the yard space, it's not big enough. It's a set of mud and water and puddle. So we need to get that address. 
Vice Principal Dikoto said several reports were made to the Ministry of Education and they are waiting for the matter to be addressed. Even while the drainage and sidewalk rehabilitation projects are ongoing, the town of Grenville continues to experience major flooding during heavy rainfall, as was evident on Thursday, posing a challenge for pedestrians, motorists and business owners alike. More in this report. The issue of flooding has always been a challenge for the town of Grenville during the wet season and this year is no different as was evident by videos circulating on social media on Thursday showing extensive flooding in the town despite the ongoing drainage and sidewalk rehabilitation project which according to reports is about 80% complete. The project consisted of rebuilding the sidewalks, making them safer for pedestrians, constructing a proper drainage system to control flooding in the town, and placing and replacing of slabs in some areas. However, although there have been mixed reviews on the project, it appears that flooding in the town of Grenville continues to persist, which according to several individuals, including former Minister of Works, Senator Norlan Cox, can be attributed to the town being below sea level, leading to blocked outlets in various parts of the town. The former Works Minister also revealed that a feasibility study was ongoing to address the flooding in Grenville and other parts of the country. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine, is continuing his 2022 round of country outreach missions here in Grenada. On Thursday, the governor and his team held discussions with media practitioners. Nisha Peters was there and filed this report. During the presentation, economist for Grenada in the Research, Statistics and Data Analytics Department, Leon Bolin, says that Grenada's economy continues to grow. However, inflation continues to be a burden issue. When you go to the supermarket, what you would have bought with $100, you know, two months ago, you could no longer do that today, right? And, and so the purchasing power of households is being affected, negatively affected. Um, Suffice it to say that our estimates for food inflation for the first six months of the year is 3.3% uh, and fuel at 2.5%. Now fuel has been contained because the government has removed the consumption tax from fuel and Grenada actually enjoys the lowest um, gasoline prices in the ECCU. Bully went on to say that in order for the economy to grow, there must be a reduction in the rate of borrowing money at the financial institutions. If you want to develop a manufacturing company, you want to start a new business, most of us have to borrow from the bank. And that's a, that's a very important cost that we, that we bear. And just to note that the weighted average lending rates, so the, all the various lending rates that banks um, have at the moment, when we, when we average them across the Grenadian economy, we see a downward trend in interest rates from 7.9% in 2017 to just over 6% uh, in, uh, as of June 2022. So this is a positive development. It's something that the governor has been championing, that we need to reduce the cost of borrowing for our businesses if we expect our economies to grow. The Economist for Grenada in the Research, Statistics and Data Analytics Department highlights some of the areas Grenada needs to focus on to transform the economy. Importantly, with respect to food, we note here that the cost of fertilizers for the first six months of this year has increased by 39%. Year on year, it's in excess of 100%. Right? Farmers buy fertilizers as a critical input in the farming business. So to the extent that fertilizers continue to increase, the cost of farming increases, the cost of the crops that they produce, or getting it to market increases. And so what we see ultimately at the supermarket uh, we, uh, is, is higher prices for some of the food that we, that we produce locally. And so um, it's something that we have to watch very carefully. As part of the governor for the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank round of country outreach missions, the governor visited Anguilla in May, Montserrat in June, St. Lucia in July, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines in September. For MTV News, I am Nisha Peters. Although the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority is reporting good compliance by the general public on the removal of dump sites in specific areas that were deemed hazardous to the community, one solid waste official says some communities have opted to have some units remain despite it having the potential to become a public health hazard. Earlier this year, the Solid Waste Management Authority and Ministry of Health officials began the process of condemning waste disposal units and dumping sites that were deemed a public health hazard due to its close proximity to businesses, schools and other entities in the various towns and communities.
Providing an update on these no-dumping sites, Senior Communications Officer at the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority, Myrna Julian, said so far there has been good cooperation from the public. Okay, we have had very good compliance to um, some of those um, areas where we have done assessments to determine whether these units are um, obsolete, right, or in cases where they are um, contributing to a number of public health issues. The compliance has been good, but we have had a few challenges, you know, with um, non-compliance in some areas. But generally, um, based on reports from our operations unit, the compliance has been good. Um, they're responding to the Ministry of Health notifications regarding illegal dumping and the consequences for illegal dumping and continued use of those areas. Residents in those areas where the sites have been condemned have been using the weekly waste collection service as another option, Julian said. We've uh, um, gotten rid of those units in communities where we think that they're absolute and the people can um, comply to the days for assigned for the collection service and we can move on from there. However, residents in various communities have opted to have several disposal units and sites remain, despite they having the potential to becoming a public health hazard. But there are some communities where we have seen there are issues with the presence of these communal receptacles still contributing to improper use and so on. But in our assessments of those communities, um, we have to work with the residents and the residents, they are um, reluctant to give up those units. We don't think that it is a very um, progressive way to go. Um, so that when we go out and we do the, the um, evaluations and the voting, normally we, in those areas where you see that the bins are still present, it is because they have voted in favor of keeping those units there. She says they will continue to engage the public on the issues of indiscriminate dumping and finding viable ways for waste disposal, including waste separation. That's the first segment of news. More news when we come back. The first segment of MTV News was brought to you in association with the GUT Cooperative Credit Union. It's where you belong. Do more with your new GUT Credit Union Visa Debit Card, which gives you access to your cash at any Connex or Visa certified ATMs locally and internationally. Make your payments with a tap of your card using the contactless feature and have the freedom to make purchases locally, online, overseas, whenever you travel, anywhere Visa is accepted. Experience the enhanced security fraud protection through the Visa chip technology. If you don't have your new GUT Credit Union Visa International Debit Card, speak to any one of our representatives today to do more. Your new GUT Credit Union Visa International Debit Card, a smarter way to access your cash. More smart, more secure. You've asked for it, and now it's here. The NLA announces its new mid-morning draw, commencing September 30th at 9.45 a.m. Yes, you heard right. Draws for Pick 3, Cash 4, and Playway will now be conducted three times daily at 9.45 a.m., 12.45 p.m., and 7.45 p.m., Monday to Friday. The Saturday draws remains twice daily. And that's not all. Simply place your non-winning Cash 4, Pick 3, and Playway tickets valued at least $10 from a single purchase in the NLA branded box at your favorite sales location. Four chances to win 10 prizes of $1,000 each. Whoa! $10,000 is up for winnings. Compliments the NLA. Be sure to write your name, address, and contact info on your entries before submitting. Promotion runs from September 30th to October 28th and would be drawn on Friday, November 4th, 2022. NLA, making your dreams a reality while supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Must be 18 or older to participate. Terms and conditions apply. See stores for details. This gives you the most energy. This gives you strong bones and muscles. This is great for metabolism. This is good for skin, nails, and hair. This is great for your heart. This gives you the most energy. This is great this gives you strong bones. This, this is great for metabolism. Keep it simple with Perfect 7. 7 big benefits, 1 little box. Co-op Bank introduces e-payments. 
our new e-banking feature that allows you to make payments online hassle-free. Log in securely with biometric technology. Make recurring payments easier with automated scheduling. Save time by paying your bills online. Transfer money to accounts at other local and regional banks. Send wire transfers on the go to anywhere in the world. Or send money to friends or family using Buddy Payment. E-Payments, the swift, simple, and secure way of transferring money. Welcome home. At Courts Optical, we've got the perfect combination of style and value just for you. Shop from our wide range of stylish frames. And for a limited time, buy one and get a second pair at 80% off. We've got frames as low as $99. Ask about our affordable credit plans from 3 to 24 months. Make your appointment today at CourtsOptical.com. Conditions apply. See in store for details. Courts Optical. Value you can see. When a loved one passes on, we all need the comfort, support, and guidance of a trusted friend. You can rely on LaCour Brothers Funeral Home. We provide a personalized professional service that exceeds all expectations. Our dedicated staff responds to your every need with the greatest detail, ensuring affordability with a variety of options. Our upgraded state-of-the-art facilities, spacious air-conditioned chapel with live internet streaming, a modern environmentally safe crematorium, the only of its kind on island, private viewing spaces, large on-site repass center, a modern transportation fleet. Join our burial society today and make personalized arrangements for that final moment. As you prepare to enter your loved one into eternal rest, visit or call the Quar Brothers Funeral Home and select a package that brings added comfort to the entire family. The Quar Brothers Funeral Home and Burial Society, continuing a tradition of excellence. The second segment of MTV News is brought to you in association with the Communal Cooperative Credit Union Limited. To grow with us, save with us. We support you at every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. Welcome back. The opening ceremony of the 35th OECS PPS Policy Board and the 8th Council of Health Ministers meetings was held virtually on Thursday 27th and was chaired by Sir Molwyn Joseph, Antigua and Barbuda's Health Minister. Addressing one of the region's challenges regarding the preparations for another pandemic or crisis was the Director General of the OECS, Dr. Didicus Jules. We get more from Donald Hosten. OECS Director General Dr. Didicus Jules speaking at the opening ceremony of the 35th OECS PPS Policy Board and the 8th Council of Health Ministers meetings commended the gathering for the work that has been done over the past three years in the region. Dr. Jules spoke about the report that will be tabled in the meetings, which he said chronicles the transition from a pharmaceutical procurement service to a pool procurement service. He explained the significance of this. This is not simply a change of name, but represents an important service paradigm shift and a substantial expansion of the remit of the unit. This transformation emerges from our collective analysis of the multiple challenges faced by member states and an identification of the opportunity for strategic repositioning presented by recurring crises. 
The question posed by incoming chair Sir Maulin Joseph made reference to the region's preparation should there be another pandemic. And according to Dr. Jules, this is indeed a very relevant question. So to answer the question, we have just had our new strategic direction approved by the OECS authority last week in Montserrat. The plan identifies five strategic priorities that will direct our work for the next six years two trianiums. And what is critical about it is that its definition of concrete markers to ensure movement on the provisions of the revised Treaty of Basté. Dr. Jules highlighted the five strategic priorities. The five strategic priorities are one, accelerating regional integration, two, reinventing the economy, three, valuing the environment, four, building resilience, and five, advancing equity and inclusion. Reporting for MTV News, I am Donella Houston. The tourism sector is considered to be a lucrative and a thriving industry, particularly now during the post-pandemic times. And the Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association is doing its part to get more people actively involved in the sector through the hosting of its first job fair. Speaking to MTV's Donella Hosten was Chief Executive Officer of the GHTA, Arlene Friday. For the first time, the Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association will be having a job fair on Saturday, November 5th, 2022. And according to their CEO, Arlene Friday, it comes at a time when the industry is bouncing back following the pandemic and the challenges that came with it. Friday went on to say that they are trying to get people back into the tourism industry. And we think it's really an important time now that we are past the pandemic and the industry is bouncing back to get people back into the into the industry and not just people back but qualified people so at the job fair it you know we plan to have various subsectors within the tourism industry present so you're talking hotels dive sector um culinary um services tour operators. According to her, at the job fair, there will be many positions and opportunities to be filled. Knowing the, the ways that you can also um, grow within the tourism industry. So you're talking about different levels of jobs. So you have managers, supervisors, all different levels of jobs that are available for people who are interested. In addition to this, Friday noted that there will be other organizations and stakeholders present as well. We will also have the National Training Association to show people how they can be certified in different areas. Um, the WISH Foundation will also be there. I'm sorry, the WISH Organization will be there as well because they will be showing people how you can also take free courses within the hospitality sector. And we will also be giving free advice and um, answer any questions about how to write a CV. According to the CEO, this is an opportunity that people should not miss. You know, if you have some type of knowledge, we ask you to come out. Even if you don't, maybe there's a way that you can take some classes for free and learn about that. So I think there's something for everyone. Um, so I would tell all to come out just to see where you might fit, and maybe there's there's new things that you might um, never know that there is um, a perfect match just for you. Come dressed to impress. We ask people to come um, professionally dressed. It could be professional casual. Reporting for MTV News, I am Donella Houston. A donation from the government and people of Japan has equipped the fisheries sector with additional freezer trucks and ice-making machines that would contribute to increased operational capacity and efficiency with, within the sector. Three freezer trucks and 16 ice-making machines worth over U.S. $500,000 were handed over during a short ceremony at the St. George's Fish Market on Thursday. Representatives from both the Ministries of Fisheries and Foreign Affairs spoke to the improved capacity that they foresee for fisheries as a result of these new equipment. Minister for Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives is Senator Adrian Thomas. 
as a new government and we forge in terms of transforming agriculture in Grenada, fisheries is very high on the agenda. And we want to rejuvenate, reorganize the fishing industry. We realize the importance of the fishing industry to the economy, to the economy of Grenada, Caracu, and P.T. Martinique. And we want to pay a lot of emphasis on, on that. The fisher folks have been crying out in regards to their product leaving this country. Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable Joseph Andel says freezer trucks and ice machines are needed for efficiency and effectiveness within the sector. This handing over of 16 ice making machines and three refrigerated trucks worth over half a million US dollars will greatly assist in the storage capacity of our fisher folk and the lessening of spoilage of meat fish, and other seafood. Grenada is moving forward to enhance its fisheries sector, and as such, on behalf of the people and government of Grenada, I wish to express deepest gratitude for such a kind gesture by the government and people of Japan. Charge the affair of Japan, Kamada Yushiko, is hopeful that the donation will effectively serve the fisheries sector for the benefit of future generations. I hope that the equipment will be well maintained and used for many years to come, not only for the benefit of current generation, but also for the benefit of next generation. The government of Japan is greatly pleased with the, with the procurement of this equipment, which joins other cooperative initiatives currently being carried out in the areas of technical training, training and mitigation of impact of sargassum invasions. Japan has supported Grenada in health, human resource development, and infrastructure development through grants, equipment, and technical support for the past 47 years. The Grenada Informer appeals to all our readers and business associates to remain alert during this continuing stormy weather condition on our island. We are aware it is past the more dangerous part of the hurricane season, but systems continue presenting themselves, so therefore we should remain alert and prepare to take precautions whenever called upon to. In this week's edition of our online publication, Randy John awaits the verdict on his capital murder charge. Attorney Henry Pariag critical of planned October holiday change. Illegal dumping getting out of hand. In the Sister Isles, Minister Andrews salutes elderly. Anticipated Big Corn Festival on Sunday. Four kayaks graduate from SGU with bachelor's degrees and much more. That's the second segment of news. Regional highlights are up next. The second segment of MTV News was brought to you in association with the Communal Cooperative Credit Union Limited. To grow with us, save with us. We support you at every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. WeatherGuard Pro. For every project, there's only one Pro.
asked for it, and now it's here. The NLA announces its new mid-morning draw, commencing September 30th at 9.45 a.m. Yes, you heard right. Draws for Pick 3, Cash 4, and Playway will now be conducted three times daily at 9.45 a.m., 12.45 p.m., and 7.45 p.m., Monday to Friday. The Saturday draws remains twice daily. And that's not all. Simply place your non-winning Cash 4, Pick 3, and Playway tickets valued at least $10 from a single purchase in the NLA branded box at your favorite sales location. Four chances to win 10 prizes of $1,000 each. Whoa! $10,000 is up for winnings. Compliments the NLA. Be sure to write your name, address, and contact info on your entries before submitting. Promotion runs from September 30th to October 28th and would be drawn on Friday, November 4th, 2022. NLA, making your dreams a reality while supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Must be 18 or older to participate. Terms and conditions apply. See stores for details. Did you know that the National Policy on Sports and Physical Activity will project a new vision for sports and physical activity in Grenada, Karakou, and Piti Martinique? The Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture will commence a series of consultations with the stakeholders starting Thursday, October 6th in the parish of St. John at the St. John's Anglican Primary School to highlight the focal areas contained in the policy. The National Policy on Sports and Physical Activity will also play a major role in the transformation agenda of government and will see the formation of a National Sports Council and the parish councils in every parish. Your recommendation are needed to ensure that the policy is implemented seamlessly. Attend the consultations in your parish and get involved. Saturday, 5th November, featuring from Trinidad's Grunta, Baron, Marcia Miranda, Darling, look, it's Christmas, a special time of year. From Grenada, Karakou String Band, Le Le Le, Hess and Leke and Steve Theodore. Get your early bird ticket for $60 after you pay 80 and more at the door. And are available at Chucky's Bar, Brendan on the Terminal, Grenada Optical in St. George's, Kittens Pharmacy Granville, Kittens Healthcare Grand Ants, Chai's Bar St. Mark's, Nick and Bites Quag, St. David's Pharmacy, Calico Shopping Center, Main Street, Sutters, Soka Parang in the Basket, Spice Basket, Saturday, 5th November, Showtime, 8 p.m. Brought to you by National Lotteries Authority, We FM, Force FM, Top FM, Magic FM, Bulk Buy, Carib, Captain. Harris, GBN, MTV, Alamanda Hotel, Three O's Auto Supply, and Grenada Distillers, Soka Parang, Indeed Basket, Spice Basket, Saturday, 5th November, Showtime, 8 p.m. It's another Chucky's promotion. At Bailey's Funeral Home, we understand the pain and grief you experience when you suffer the loss of a loved one. For years, we have helped thousands of families get through that difficult time by providing professional funeral services to meet their unique needs. 
Whether your choice is cremation or burial, call us or come into our new facility on the Karanach and meet with our arrangers in a spacious and comfortable environment. Choose from a wide variety of quality coffins and caskets at prices from as low as $1,900. At Bailey's Funeral Home, we believe that no one should feel overwhelmed or anxious about funeral expenses. So when it's time to plan a funeral, join a burial society, or make pre-arrangements when service and costs matter, call Bailey's Funeral Home at 440-2558 or visit us at baileysfuneralhome.org. Bailey's Funeral Home, still providing the perfect tribute any family can afford. The third segment of MTV News is brought to you in association with Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom, your future. My name is Mr. Bernard McIntosh. I chose to become a member of the Arisa Credit Union early in the um, 1980s when I was introduced uh, by one of my co-workers. Very early after I would have become a member. My first loan was um, a very smooth and easy sailing for um, uh, purchasing of a motor vehicle. As a youth, you know, young, early 20s and so on, every young guy look out to have a ride. And that was very easy. On this, it's the 75th year of transforming lives. I want to congratulate the Arisa Credit Union. Definitely, I know my life has been transformed because I would have never achieved most of the things that I have achieved had I been associated with a different financial institution. Hey, Nationals, where are you? Are you with us or are you elsewhere? Listen to me. It's not just a savings with a riser. It's a prudent investment. Now here is Oslin Crosby with this evening's Regional Roundup. And now for this evening's regional roundup, three people, including two Trinidad and Tobago nationals, have appeared in a court hearing and were charged with conspiracy to smuggle goods, including firearms and firearm components, from the United States to the Caribbean country. U.S. Attorney Roger B. Hanberg said U.S. National Edward Solomon King III, 31, as well as Trinidadians Tevin O'Brien Oliver, 29, and Jamil Kia Phillip, 30, each face a maximum penalty of five years in federal prison if convicted of the charges. They have been described as members of a Caribbean arms trafficking ring. According to the indictment, Oliver, Philip, and King were part of a ring that unlawfully exported firearms, firearms components including upper and lower receivers and gun parts, kits, and related items from Florida to Trinidad and Tobago between 2019 and 2022. Oliver and Philip are both Trinidadians. The firearms, which included pistols and rifles and related equipment, were concealed within boxing fight equipment, speakers, and other household items to avoid detection by law enforcement and customs authorities. Student Trinidad former member of parliament Charandas Passad has been to Guyana over allegations of sexual harassment and verbal abuse of Indian animal rights advocate some seven months after he was appointed Guyana's High Commissioner to India. We get more in this HGPTV report. President Irfan Ali on Wednesday during a live statement on social media confirmed the recall of Charandas Prasad one day after a video of him verbally abusing an Indian national made its way into the media space. The president maintained that the behavior of Prasad is not reflective of the relationship Guyana is seeking to sustain with India. Mr. Charandas agreed with me that in keeping with the best interests of Guyana and the image of Guyana, that he would return home from his posting in India. The head of state advanced that during interactions with Prasad, he learned that the incident occurred in August of this year and that Prasad has been cleared of the accusations by Indian authorities. Additionally, Prasad claims that the video is not a full representation of what transpired. Mr. Charandas then communicated to me that this matter was dealt with by the relevant agencies and authorities in India and that there was no evidence of any misconduct and for a matter of fact, he was cleared of any accusation 
of sexual harassment. He also shared with me the letter that substantiated this statement. In the video, Prasad is seen swearing at a woman who is asking about the whereabouts of a dog. What helpless dog? I don't, I don't need a dog in my yard, all right? You want a dog, take it, put it between. Nightly News understands that the woman who is a dedicated animal rights activist engages in feeding stray dogs for over a decade. Prasad was also witnessed in the video telling the woman that he does not care who she is, thereafter verbally attacking another individual who was filming the ordeal. The woman reportedly filed a complaint to the authorities. The head of state has assured that steps will be taken to allow a smooth transition and to strengthen Guyana his work with India. Prasad previously served as a member of parliament for the Alliance for Change. In 2018, the then AFC member of parliament defected and voted for the no confidence motion, giving the People's Progressive Party civic a win against the APNU AFC government side and paving the way for elections in March 2020. Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs Amanza Walton Desir on Tuesday called on the government to immediately recall Charandas Prasad to save whatever modicum of respect for diplomacy and foreign representation which might remain for the country. Tamika Rodney reporting for the HGP Nightly News. Finally, authorities on Wednesday searched for at least eight migrants believed to be missing in waters near the historic area of Puerto Rico's capital. The U.S. Coast Guard said the migrants were apparently aboard a boat that capsized in San Juan Bay on Tuesday night, according to two survivors from the Dominican Republic who were rescued. The searches come amid a spike in human trafficking. Voyages departing from Haiti and the Dominican Republic as people flee poverty and violence. From October 2021 through September 2022, the Coast Guard detained at least 88 such voyages in waters near Puerto Rico in the Mona Passage, which separates the U.S. territory from the island of Hispaniola, which is shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. During that period, more than 1,700 Dominicans were detained, along with 444 Haitians and four Cubans. And that's your regional roundup this evening. I'm Arcelin Crosby. This is the MTV Evening News. More news when we come back. The third segment of MTV News was brought to you in association with Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom, your future. Arisa celebrates 75 years of transforming lives with its celebratory suite of loan products. Own your own vehicle, education, land, or home and anchor your roots. Start living the life you deserve by applying for an own-your-own loan at reduced interest rates. Simplify your life and consolidate all your debts by applying for a Simplify loan and open doors to new beginnings and explore more opportunities to shape your future. Call or send us a WhatsApp on 423-4987 or email us at loans at arisecu.com today to continue your journey towards financial freedom. Terms and conditions apply. Arisa Credit Union, celebrating 75 years of transforming lives. You're watching the MTV Evening News, sporting highlights are up next. Darling, would you like some tea? I've made your favorite. Well, thank you, darling. I'm here finishing my blog post to help homeowners understand their electricity bills. The left side of your bill shows the rates for electricity and the government charges. The middle portion shows the number of units you've consumed, plus the history of your usage over the last eight months. And the right side shows how much you're being charged. I really think people are going to value this information. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Sunday, Sunday, November 6th from 5 p.m. Get ready as Megaforce Promotion presents Christmas in November. And we're celebrating with the massive cash money bingo with a jackpot of $100,000 cash. What's up? 
$100,000 in raw cash. It's all happening at the National Stadium, Sunday, November 6th. And the best part, tickets are only $50. This is an event no one should miss. $100,000 cash up for grabs in Megaforce promotion. Christmas in November. Meg Mega! Bingo! Ooh la la. See what's new at Quartz. We've got great deals on living and dining room sets, appliances, electronics, and smart devices, and more. Shop today with no cash using Quartz Ready Finance, 3 to 48 month payment plans available. Shop in store or online at shopquartz.com. Come see what's new and take advantage of these great deals only at Quartz. Bringing value home. Conditions apply. Holy Natural Spring Water is a water for every occasion on the field of sports at your workplace. Just open the bottle and savor the pure, refreshing taste. Holy Natural Spring Water is produced in Mama Can St. Andrews and is available in all sizes nationwide. To order, telephone 444 7654 or 533 7654. Holy Natural Spring Water, Grenada's purest bottled water. <sighs> Jamaica Talawas open to franchise expansion. That story and more coming up in sports. The MTV Evening Sports is brought to you in association with Courts, bringing value home. At Courts Optical, we've got the perfect combination of style and value just for you. Shop from our wide range of stylish frames. And for a limited time, buy one and get a second pair at 80% off. We've got frames as low as $99. Ask about our affordable credit plans from 3 to 24 months. Make your appointment today at CourtsOptical.com. Conditions apply. See in store for details. Courts Optical. Value you can see. The Grenadian General Insurance Half Marathon and 10K Road Race is on. On Sunday, November 13th, this race starts at 2 p.m., beginning at Current Junction St. David and going to the Karani James Athletic Stadium. There are prizes for the top 10 male and female finishers in the Half Marathon, top 5 finishers in the 10K, prizes for the oldest finisher, youngest finisher, and the school, club, or organization with the most finishers. Transportation will be provided. Register at GrenadaXS.com. Registration closes Saturday, 12th November. The Grenadian General Insurance Half Marathon and 10K Road Race is on. Now here is Donella Hosten with this evening's Sporting Highlights. Good evening, sporting fans. The three cyclists who took part in the 2022 Elite Caribbean Cycling Championships, which was held in the Dominican Republic from October 21st to the 23rd, are... Carrega Charles, under 23, Grenadian-born Kevin Alexis, senior, who also races for the British Army, and Red Walters, 2021, under 23 champion. The athletes spoke about their experiences. Hello, my name is Carrega Charles from Grenada, uh, representing Grenada. Uh, as a partner on a 23 time trial, uh, as well as a road race of time trial, is a good enough opener towards, well, for me, put into the road race. Main goal was to um, do good in the road race, but that didn't went as planned. I got in one or two moves, I'll be able to catch a break. One or two times I was positioned good enough in the bud, but things didn't went as planned, and then I got pulled out after a while, but that's all part of my case. But on to the off season now, probably the next two weeks break before I get back on the bike, and then bigger goals next year, and my preparation and fitness should be much better and at a higher level when it's the 2023 season as well so big things to come it's been a, a mixed bag of results for me the first day in the time trial i got second which i was fairly happy with as i wanted to get a podium and then today which was the road race i was that was my main target and i was looking forward to it uh i was in the front position with what the guy who won and i was with him in the final three kilometers 
but unfortunately my bike had an issue which meant I had to stop and swap bike with someone else so unfortunately I didn't get a good position and came 29. But I'm really happy with the results, I'm happy with where my form's at and now I can finally take a little two week break before I start training for next year. Anya Francis of Montu and Denny Fletcher of the Limes are the winners of the inaugural South St. George Sports Development Organization Road Races for Women and Men staged last weekend. Francis covered the distance of five miles in a time of 36 minutes and 54 seconds to defeat a field of more than 60 female competitors running from the Limes around Mont Rouge up to Food Fair Shopping Center through Montu across to the valley, down the Morris Bishop Highway, passing through the housing scheme and ending in the limes. Running a competitive second was Simone Ross of Springs, recording a time of 38 minutes and 9 seconds. In third position, Dehia Modest of Granans Valley, in a time of 38.59 seconds. The men's race was keenly contested, with Denny Fletcher of the Limes maintaining a fast pace, defeating the more than 100 male competitors. He ran the five-mile course in 32 minutes and 30 seconds. Mount Hartman's Nathan Thomas was second in a time of 34 minutes and 46 seconds, followed by Hussein Noel in 34 minutes minutes and 59 seconds. Fourth place was Isaac Joseph in 45 minutes and 5 seconds. The youngest female to finish the race was Soraya Whiteman and the oldest was Hermelin Armstrong. Among the men, the youngest Shamon Simon and the oldest Vernon Garway. More than $3,000 in prizes and certificates were presented to winners by the main sponsor, Radisson Beach Resort. Also presenting prizes to the winners was Parliamentary Representative for South St. George, Honorable Andy Williams, who said he is looking forward to having a more dynamic and active sport community. Chief Executive Officer Jeff Mills says that the Jamaica Talawas franchise is opened to creating a women's team to take part in the Women's Caribbean Premier League should the opportunity present itself next season. The first ever women's CPL was staged between August and September and featured three teams, Ghana Amazon Warriors, Barbados Royals and champions Trinbago Knight Riders. England's T20 World Cup hopes were unexpectedly dented on Wednesday as they suffered a five-run defeat against Ireland in a rain-affected encounter at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Joss Butler's side were 105 for five after 14.3 overs, chasing a total of 157 when officials were left with no choice but to bring an early end to the contest amid a downpour in Victoria. And that's it for this evening's sports. I am Donella Hostan. That's the sports, the weather, and a recap of the headlines when we come back. The MTV Evening Sports was brought to you in association with Quartz, bringing value home. MTV Weather Report comes to you in association with Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Need a quick, convenient way to pay your bills and avoid lines? Use the online banking feature from Republic Bank, First Caribbean, or Co-op Bank. Contact them today to set up your online banking and enjoy 24-hour convenience to make your bill payments. Stay safe. Grenlec, we are united even when we are apart. Good Thursday evening views once again with the nighttime weather forecast and meteorologist Wayne Williams. The high top level trough continue to produce uh, heavy showers over the Eastern Caribbean, especially over the extreme northern and the southern portions. A bit of sunshine was seen by the islands in the vicinity of the northern windward and the southern leeward islands. As the trough continues to weaken, we're still going to see some more showers tonight. We have an active area of uh, showers and thunder showers just over Grenada, uh, well, St. Vincent, Grenada, and stretching towards the South American coast. Uh, over Trinidad. So we're going to see some more showers tonight as that system slowly breaks up. The next the tropical wave is uh, continuing to head towards the Eastern Caribbean. Quite an active area behind that one looking uh, uh, more uh, 
in terms of development possibility of some development as it moves forward so we're going to keep our eyes on that also slight tears is also there we're seeing that right now and that would continue uh, through to the weekend and a little beyond right now the main focus is that area of uh, cloudness still over the extreme southern caribbean that will bring us some showers again we can see the approaching edge of that of the cloudness associated with the next tropical wave that continues to move slowly towards the islands The forecast for Thursday night is for some more showers with southeasterly winds between 12 and 22 miles per hour. We may even feel some higher gusts in and around showers. Minimum temperature on the cool side 23. The moon is going to rise tomorrow morning 8.59 and set tomorrow night time at 8.38. On Friday, we're going to see some more showers, but fewer more um, periods of sunshine. Uh, winds will remain gusty uh, coming from the southeast between 12 and 24 miles per hour. Again, there is a possibility of some higher gusts. It's going to ease off into the afternoon, however. Choppy seas with 5 to 7 foot waves. Sunrise is 558, sunset 542. Sunshine will come through. A high of 32 will feel like 32. Some more showers are in store for both Port of Spain and Bridgetown, but they're going to be heavy and more frequent in Port of Spain with generally fair skies in Kingston. Partly cloudy for Miami, the sunshine continues in New York and cloudy in London. Here at home, we still have the chance of some uh, leftover showers on Saturday. Partly cloudy on Sunday, about a 30 to 40% chance of showers then. Fair conditions are expected on Monday, but from Tuesday to Wednesday, look for the possibility of showers to develop. We could even start developing by Monday. Uh, Partly cloudy conditions after that. That's it for me for Thursday night, folks. Have yourself a great night. Remember, you can join me again on Friday. TV Weather Report was brought to you in association with Grenleck, energizing our Grenada. Now to end the news, a recap of the headlines. Former Supervisor of Elections wins court matter against the Governor General. A call is made for the relevant authorities to intervene and address several challenges in a primary school on the western side of the island. Grenville flooding wars continue. And in sports, Jamaica Talawas open to franchise expansion. On behalf of the news and the production departments, I am Troy Gill. Thank you for watching. Good night. Winning $25,000 and up to six times by scratching just one little ticket. Get your triple cash scratch tickets for a chance to live your best life. Win easy with scratch. For just $3, match any of your numbers to any of the winning numbers and win the prize shown for that number. Reveal a money back symbol and win the prize instantly. Triple cash scratch. In stores now. Must be 18 or older to play. From the moment that I get up, I'm feeling right. Good evening, viewers and listeners. This is the National Lotteries Authority's Daily Pick 3 Evening Draw. It is Thursday, October 27th, 2022. I'm your draw hostess, Leslie Ann Johnson. Supervising the draw, Ms. Giselle Alexander, representing PKF Accountants and Business Advisors. As usual, a quick reminder, there are four different bed types in this game from which you can choose. They're called in line, mix, pair, backup. It pays to play Daily Pick 3. So let's see if you are tonight's lucky winner. Good luck to you. 
All right, here we go. So check your tickets. Our first number two, the second number four, the final number seven. All right, just to recap for your benefit, our first number is two, followed by four, the final is seven. Once again, two, four, and seven. Congratulations, of course, if you are tonight's lucky winner. Congratulations as well to our 21 winners from our daily pick three midday draw. The total payout was $2,350. The Play With Choice up next. We'll see you soon. I'm a winner. You are winner. It's the big one, Grenada. Imagine winning $25,000 and up to six times by scratching just one later ticket. Get your triple cash scratch tickets for a chance to live your best life. Win easy with scratch. For just $3, match any of your numbers to any of the winning numbers and win the prize shown for that number. Reveal a money back symbol and win the prize instantly. Triple cash scratch in stores now. Must be 18 or older to play. Cause I'm a winner From the moment that I get up I'm feeling right Hello once again, this is the National Lotteries Authority's Playway Evening Draw for today, Thursday, October 27th, 2022. I'm your draw hostess, Leslie Ann Johnson. With me once again is Ms. Giselle Alexander, representing PKF Accountants and Business Advisors. In this game, you can bet from $1 up to $10, or you can bet in increments on any number or dream symbol of your choice and be in with a chance to win 24 times the amount you bet. So that is $24 for every $1 that you spend Follow your dreams and win your way with Playway. Let's see if you are tonight's lucky winner. Good luck to you. All right. Once again, our playway number for tonight is 2323. Three. The dream symbol is rat. Congratulations if you are tonight's lucky winner. Congratulations as well to our 200 playway winners from our midday draw. The total payout was $22,248. Stay with us. The Daily Cash Four is up next. We'll see you soon. Win more with the NLA's Daily Cash Four. Every day with more plays and bigger prizes to be won. It's a four-digit game with all the bet types you already know and much, much more. From 0000 to 9999. Choose your four numbers and place your bet from 11 different bet types. Choose from inline, four different mixes, first three, last three, and four different backup options too. Best of all, it starts at just one dollar except for backups which starts at two dollars win as much as five thousand dollars with a one dollar inline bet and as much as six thousand two hundred dollars in a two dollar backup bet imagine fifty thousand dollars for a winning ten dollar inline bet there's definitely more to win with the daily cash for more plays bigger prizes twice per day mondays to saturdays must be 18 and over to participate NLA, making your dreams come true while supporting sports, culture, and nation building. All right, so we're back with you. This is National Lotteries Authority's Daily Cash for Evening Draw. It is Thursday, October 27th, 2022. I'm your draw hostess, Leslie Ann Johnson. Back with me once again, Ms. Giselle Alexander, representing PKF Accountants and Business Advisors. In this game, you can choose any number from 0 to 9 in any of the 11 bet types offered. The tickets cost as little as $1, except backup, that costs $2. Or please, bigger prizes. So let's play Daily Cash 4. Good luck to you. Right, here we go. So check your tickets off first number for tonight. Nine, the second number. Five, the next number. Seven, the final number. Seven. All right, so just to recap for your benefit, our first number is 9, followed by 5. The next number, 7. The final is 7 as well. 9, 5, 7, 7. Congratulations if you are tonight's lucky winner. And to our 15 daily cash four winners from our midday draw, the total payout was $17,600. Continue supporting the National Lotteries Authority. Have a great night. Win more with the NLA's 
is daily cash for every day with more plays and bigger prizes to be won. It's a four-digit game with all the bet types you already know and much, much more. From 0000 to 9999, choose your four numbers and place your bet from 11 different bet types. Choose from inline, four different mixes, first three, last three, and four different backup options too. Best of all, it starts at just one dollar except for backups which starts at two dollars win as much as five thousand dollars with a one dollar inline bet and as much as six thousand two hundred dollars in a two dollar backup bet imagine fifty thousand dollars for a winning ten dollar inline bet there's definitely more to win with the daily cash for more plays bigger prizes twice per day mondays to saturdays must be 18 and over to participate NLA, making your dreams come true while supporting sports, culture, and nation building. When a loved one passes on, we all need the comfort, support, and guidance of a trusted friend. You can rely on LaCour Brothers Funeral Home. We provide a personalized professional service that exceeds all expectations. Our dedicated staff responds to your every need with the greatest detail, ensuring affordability with a variety of options. Our upgraded state-of-the-art facilities, spacious air-conditioned chapel with live internet streaming, a modern environmentally safe crematorium, the only of its kind on island, private viewing spaces, large on-site repass center, a modern transportation fleet. Join our burial society today and make personalized arrangements for that final moment. As you prepare to enter your loved one into eternal rest, visit or call the Quar Brothers Funeral Home and select a package that brings added comfort to the entire family. The Quar Brothers Funeral Home and Burial Society, continuing a tradition of excellence. Priska Eliza Charles Mitchell of Seaview Karakou, former employee of NIS Karakou Branch of Seaview Karakou, passed away on Saturday, 15th October, at the age of 56. She was the daughter of Lynette Charles. She was the wife of Junior Mitchell, mother of Keila Mitchell, brother of Fitzgerald Charles and Denny Reborn in the USA. Raymond Charles and Evert James in Karakou and Godwin Kwashi in Grenada sister-in-law of Delores Simmons and Rhonda Charles in the USA, Lystra Charles and Anselm James in Karakou, niece of George Charles, Thaddeus and Timothy Bartholomew, Roger Jeremiah in Grenada and Thomas Charles in Canada, Virginia Wallace and Jean Nelson in the UK, Joyce Rayburn in the USA, Homie Ortiz and Leah Jaffia in Karakou, aunt of Judy, Regina, Janelle, Cho, Camille, John, Jason, Reborn, Regional, and Cordell Charles. Caretakers, Bueller Roberts, and Shelley Belfon, Frank in Grenada. Other relatives and close friends including Charles and Mitchell families, Lawrence, Jaffia, Mackenzie, Guy, James, Reborn, and Atkins families. The management and staff of NIS Karakou Branch and Grenada, graduating class of 1985, friends and neighbors of Seaview, Bushishu, and surrounding areas to numerous to mention. The funeral of the late Priska Eliza Charles Mitchell of Seaview, Karakou will take place on Friday, 28th October at 10 a.m. Funeral service will be held at Christ the King Anglican Church, Hillsborough, Karakou, and the interment will be at the Brunswick Cemetery. Funeral arrangements have been entrusted to Lockwood Brothers Funeral Home. Peter Gordon Frederick of Waltham, St. Mark, passed away on Monday, 3rd October, at the age of 69. He was the husband of Veronica Frederick, father of Otterson Frederick, Andy Prince, Pinky Frederick Narain, 
Glennis Lester and Janney Frederick, grandfather of 17, great-grandfather of one, father-in-law of Delroy Narain and Alion Bird, brother of Eva Frederick, Judith Frederick, Cepius, Septimus and Merle Frederick, Molly Little, nephew of Elizabeth Modest and George Frederick, many nieces, nephews, other relatives and friends in Grenada, USA and the UK including the Frederick, Fletcher, Ned, Mitchell, Grant, Philip, Patrick, Paul, Narine, McBain and Forsyth families, friends and neighbors of Waltham and surrounding areas. The funeral for the late Peter Gordon Frederick of Waltham St. Mark will take place on Friday 28 October at 1 p.m. The funeral service will be held at the Victoria RC Church, St. Mark, and the interment will be at the Coast Guard Cemetery. Funeral arrangements have been entrusted to Lockwa Brothers Funeral Home. Oswald Cato, also known as Uncle, of Harvey Vale Karyaku, passed away on Saturday, October 1, 2022, at the age of 96. He was the living partner of Pearl John, adopted father of Gary, brother of Sonny in the UK, uncle of George Field, Louise Henry, Kathleen, Jeffrey and Lloyd Bedeau, Jean Stanisclaus, Lynch, Thomas, Elvin and Vonica, father-in-law of Lucklin Thomas, uncle-in-law of Jonathan Stanisclaus and Elsia Bedeau, grand-uncle of 38, godfather of Joy Samerson and Maria Clowden, caregivers George Field, Nurse Hamlet and Osfred Noel. Many cousins including Jocelyn and Holly Lindor, Theobald Lambert and Peter St. Louis. Other relatives and friends including the Cato families, Nurse Hamlet and family, the Adams, Gabriel, Quashi, Simon and McIntosh families, the doctors and nurses at the Princess Royal Smart Hospital, and friends and neighbors of Harvey Vale and surrounding areas too numerous to mention. The funeral of the late Oswald Cato, also known as Uncle, of Harvey Vale Karyaku will take place on Monday, October 31st at 12 noon. Funeral service will be held at the Lacroix Brothers Funeral Chapel, Lauriston Karyaku, according to Jehovah's Witnesses' rights, and interment will be at the Harvey Vale Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacroix Brothers Funeral Home. Hermelin de Silva, née Julian, also known as Mom and Love, of Worf and Apretute, who resided at Beaton St. David died on Sunday, October 16, 2022, at the age of 86. She leaves behind three children, Chris, Emmanuel and Dolores, and a very special niece, Tracy. Grandchildren Byron, Orson, Natalie, Charlene, Santina, Krishana, Adam, Gianna, Dione, Stefan, Selena, Nigel, Rosie, Denny, Aaron, Emmanuel, Rahima, Angel, Sirius, Dwayne, and Meshach. Many great-grandchildren that love her dearly, along with family and friends in Grenada, England, and the USA. The funeral service for the late Hermelin de Silva née Julian of Worf and Apretut, who resided at Beaton St. David, will take place on Monday, October 31st at 2 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the Beaton New Testament Church, and interment will be at Family Cemetery Beaton. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Helen Agard Mitchell of Corinth St. David passed away on Monday, October 17, 2022, at the age of 75. She was the wife of Russell Mitchell, mother of Norrell, Chester, also known as Baldhead, Kathleen in Trinidad, Gordson, also known as Soka Banton in England, Kevin, also known as Danny, and Edlin, also known as Teacher Pinky. Grandmother of 25, great-grandmother of 17, sister of Norris Thomas, Carmen Grenade in the USA, Joseph and Michael Grenade, and Cynthia Grenade Samuel, sister-in-law of Claire and Teresa Grenade, and Shirley Thomas in the USA, aunt of many including Desmond and Martin Regis, Keisha Thomas and siblings, the Alexa sisters, Shahira, Anne-Marie, Adeline, Agatha and Angela. Many cousins, other relatives and close friends, including Janet and Adrian Agard, Bernadette of Latant, the Bonaparte, Agard, Alexis, Francis, Collins, John, Brazan, Lett, Pear, Mitchell, Charles, Jones, Williams, 
Ruben and Fleming families, and friends and neighbors of Corinth and surrounding areas. The funeral service for the late Helen Agard Mitchell of Corinth St. David will take place on Tuesday, November 1st at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the Ebenezer Pentecostal Church, Corinth, and interment will be at the Corinth Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Ambrose Bartholomew of Constantine St. George, who resided in Trinidad, passed away on Wednesday, October 19th, 2022, at the age of 70. Left to mourn are his wife, Margaret Bartholomew, children Paula Bartholomew de Leon, Kevon and Karen Braffitt, stepson Jerry Ding Chong, grandchildren Jemima and Mashilla de Leon, siblings Joycelyn, Sandrine, Jacinta, Godfrey and Cecil Bartholomew in the USA, Fitzroy Bartholomew in Trinidad, Nola Bartholomew, Christine Hackett, Lincoln Primus, Pastor Royston Isaac, and Joseph Bartholomew in Grenada. Uncle Norman Bartholomew in the USA. Seven sisters-in-law, one brother-in-law. Many nieces and nephews, other relatives and friends, including Nilon, Quormi, Roxel and Aluvia, grandnieces and grandnephews, the Bartholomew family of Vendum and Constantine, the Thomas family of Constantine and Vendum, and cousins including Augustus Bartholomew, Catherine Sylvester, Diane Penny, and other relatives and friends in Trinidad, Grenada, and the USA. The funeral service and interment of the late Ambrose Bartholomew will take place on Wednesday, November 2nd in Trinidad. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. George Calvin Otello Roberts, also known as Cooley and Uncle George, of Guav St. John, who resided at Frequenty St. George and the United Kingdom, passed away on Thursday, 7th July 2022 in the UK at the age of 67. He was the father of Jihad, Junaita, Junisha, Kimon Roberts, and Shane White. Son of Miriam Bido of Springs. Grandfather of Jared, Jasmine, and Juma Roberts. Brother of Julia Moore, Elizabeth Bido, Kala Bernard, Sandra, and Ruggles Ferguson. Uncle of Jalil, Kenaz, Khadija, Kadra, Kendra, Amara, and Kiziah Moore. Lois, Sheena, and Keish Welsh, Jonathan and Ethana Bido, Naji and Engels Ferguson, son-in-law of Dorcas Mason, brother-in-law of many including Tamara Ferguson, Anthony Bernard, Gladys Lewis, Agnes Mason, Michael Mason, and Kenneth Moore, father-in-law of Rachel Roberts, cousin of Beverly Hostin, Debbie Code, Tara Gimbridge, Donna and Richard Thomas. Yoland Pirig, Yvonne Snag, Arva Bernadine, Nesta and Eddie Augustine, and Joan Glean. Nephew of many including Carlisle Lewis, Nelia Hafaro, Myrtle Thomas, and Julia Noel. Many other relatives and friends including Bentley Lessie, John and Val, Pridholm, Todd and Richard. The boys by Bigger Shop, Frequenty, The Lewis, Jeffrey, Bido, Parag, Ferguson, Mason, Duncan, Ree, McPhail, and Nelson families. Friends of Frequenty, The Limes, staff of Gem and Kalinago Beach Resort, and Club Fantasia. The funeral of the late George Colvin Otello Roberts of Guav St. John, who resided at Frequenty St. George and the United Kingdom, will take place on Thursday, 3rd November at 1 p.m. The funeral service will be held at Guav Anglican Church St. John and the entombment will be at the Douglaston Cemetery. Funeral arrangements have been entrusted to Lockwa Brothers Funeral Home. Sybil Dassey Edgar, née Tyson, also known as Dassey, of Paradise St. Andrew, member of the Charismatic Revival Movement of Grenada, the Grenville and Paradise Catholic Prayer and Intercessors Prayer Group, Legion of Mary and St. Vincent de Paul Society passed away on Tuesday, October 4, 2022, at the age of 80. She was the mother of Raymond Tyson, Valia Tyson Corion, Celia, Sherma, Edwin and Devon Tyson, and Shermaine Tyson Augustine, grandmother of 25 including Shane Tyson, Garvin Barry, Dornette Tyson Wickham, Anesta, Kenesha and Devona Tyson, Shanae Augustine, Erwin Tyson, Tracy Noel and Shauna Edgar, great-grandmother of 27, 
sister of Odessa pair, Augustine, Joseph, and Stephen Tyson in the USA, mother-in-law of Dennett Corion, Clifford Augustine, Kent Batiste, Calvin Prosper, Laura May, and Claudia Tyson, sister-in-law of six including Teslin pair, Catherine Tyson, and Beverly Andrew. Many nieces and nephews in Grenada, the USA, and the UK including Lisa Tyson, Hilda Francois, Albert Tyson, and Arthur Francois. Many other relatives and friends including Lenora George Buckmeyer, Greta Joseph, Sandra Prosper and family, Dr. Carl Noel, Derek Edgar, Miss Sylvester and family, Miss Mirage, Miss Lazarus and family, Bethany Edwards, Myrel Noel, the Tyson family of Moya, Paradise and Seamoon, the Edgar, Andrew and Thorne families, and friends and neighbors of Paradise and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late Sybil Dassey Edgar, née Tyson, also known as Dassey of Paradise St. Andrew, will take place on Thursday, November 3rd at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the St. Leo R.C. Church Paradise, and interment will be at the Family Cemetery Paradise. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Everell Williams, also known as Everall, of Darbo St. George, Passed away on Tuesday, 11th October 2022 in the USA, at the age of 62. He was the husband of Nicole Philbert Williams, son of Catherine Felix and Frank de Bellet, stepson of Walter Grenade, father of Igeel Joseph in the USA, Tonel Griffith in Canada, Sheena Griffith in Trinidad, Carleen Bueta, Anika Joseph, also known as Keitha, to Micah Ferguson, and Tamara Cave, also known as Tammy, all in Grenada. Stepfather of Raquel Ferguson in Grenada and Kimani Filbert in the USA. Grandfather of 13. Brother of Martin Felix, Cheryl Felix Joseph, Garth, Alistair and Alvin Felix, and Desmond de Bellet, all in the USA. Agatha, Denise and Carol de Bellet in Grenada. Many in-laws, nieces, nephews, aunts and uncles. Many other relatives and friends including Denise Griffith, Norisa Joseph Francis, Grace Griffith, Becky Ann Ferguson, former comrades of the People's Revolutionary Army, masked band colleagues, former masqueraders of Everall and Associates, Spice Revelers and Carib Mass Bands, the communities of Guove, Darbo, River Road, Four Roads and neighboring communities. The funeral of the late Everell Everell Williams of Darbo St. George will take place on Saturday, November 5th in New Jersey, USA. Burial will be at the Fairmount Cemetery, New Jersey. Arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Anastasia Mitchell Alexander, also known as Unida and Miss Anne, of River Sally St. Patrick, who resided at Molinaire St. George. Passed away on Wednesday, October 26, 2022. The funeral arrangements for the late Anastasia Mitchell Alexander, also known as Unida and Miss Anne, of River Sally St. Patrick, who resided at Molinaire St. George, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Avil John Dominic Henry, also known as Krill, of St. James St. Andrew, Passed away on Saturday, October 22, 2022, at the age of 81. The funeral arrangements for the late Avil John Dominic Henry, also known as Krill, of St. James St. Andrew, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Stephanie Kate Seals of H.A. Blair Street, St. George's, died on Monday, October 24, 2022 at the age of 87. The funeral arrangements for the late Stephanie Kate Seals of H.A. Blair Street, St. George's will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Joseph Alexander, also known as Rampel of Beausejou, St. George, who resided at Fontenoy, died on Wednesday, October 26, 2022, at the age of 72. The funeral arrangements for the late Joseph Alexander, also known as Rampel, of Beausejou, who resided at Fontenoy St. George, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. 
Michael Edwards, also known as Nasa, Curtis, and Haggy, of Latan St. David, passed away on Sunday, October 23, 2022, at the age of 69. The funeral arrangements for the late Michael Edwards, also known as Nasa, Curtis, and Haggy, of Latan St. David, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Fitzroy Bernard Boatswain of Happy Hill St. George, who resided at Beauceju St. George, an ex-police officer and former employee of GIS, passed away on Thursday, 29th September 2022, at the age of 67. The funeral arrangements for the late Fitzroy Bernard Boatswain of Happy Hill St. George, who resided at Beauceju St. George, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's funeral home. Janet Mark, also known as Auntie of Coast Guard, who resided at Fairfield Road, Victoria St. Mark, passed away on Saturday, 21st October, at the age of 71. The funeral arrangement for the late Janet Mark, also known as Auntie of Coast Guard, who resided in Fairfield Road, Victoria St. Mark, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements have been entrusted to Lockwood Brothers Funeral Home. Teresa Thompson of Montfendu St. Patrick passed away on Saturday, 15th October at the age of 87. The funeral of the late Teresa Thompson of Montfendu St. Patrick will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements have been entrusted to Lockwood Brothers Funeral Home. Winston Modest of Mount Royal Karakou passed away on Wednesday, 19th October, at the age of 67. The funeral of the late Winston Modest of Mount Royal Karakou will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements have been entrusted to Lockwa Brothers Funeral Home. Lister Noel of Prospect St. Patrick passed away on Monday, 17th October, 2022, at the age of 30. The funeral arrangements for the late Lister Noel of Prospect St. Patrick will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Nikisha Bashiba Joseph, also known as Nikki of Concord St. John, passed away on Tuesday, 18th October 2022, at the age of 35. The funeral arrangements for the late Nikisha Bashiba Joseph, also known as Nikki of Concord St. John, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Cynthia Ventur, also known as Bridget of New Hampshire St. George, who resided in the USA, passed away on Friday, 14th October 2022, at the age of 75. The funeral arrangements for the late Cynthia Ventur, also known as Bridget of New Hampshire St. George, who resided in the USA, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Roy McMillan, also known as Uncle Mac, Kelly Key and Nuku, of Mamakan St. Andrew, passed away on Tuesday, October 18, 2022, at the age of 81. The funeral arrangements for the late Roy McMillan, also known as Uncle Mac, Kelly Key and Nuku, of Mamakan St. Andrew, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Desmond Handel Bowler of Carrier St. Andrew passed away on Thursday, October 13, 2022, at the age of 61. The funeral arrangements for the late Desmond Handel Bowler of Carrier St. Andrew will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Wayne's Funeral Services. Claude Bullen, also known as Red Eye and Charlie, of Cherry Hill St. George, passed away on Monday, October 17, 2022, at the age of 67. The funeral arrangements for the late Claude Bullen, also known as Red Eye and Charlie, of Cherry Hill St. George, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Claudine and Nicholas of Molinaire St. George passed away on Monday, 17th October 2022, at the age of 65. 
The funeral arrangements for the late Claudine Nicholas of Molinay St. George will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's funeral home. Naomi Nixon of Monkgay St. George passed away on Tuesday, 11th October 2022 at the age of 93. The funeral arrangements for the late Naomi Nixon of Monkgay St. George will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. The management and staff of MTV extend deepest condolences to those of you whose loved ones have passed on. Thank you for watching.